Hi, and welcome to this tutorial on mastering using stock Pro Tools plugins plus one free metering plugin. The purpose of this tutorial is to kind of introduce the subtle craft and art known as mastering. Pro Tools has all the elements you need, but one thing they lack is a metering tool that measures in LUFs or loudness units full scale. So let's find that, let's download it, and we will master. So it's called Ulean, and I think like, I'll do a search for that. Uh, here it is, loudness meter. Uh, you can download the free version. I'm gonna download the free version. I'm working on a Mac. All right, install that. Done. All right, so I'm just gonna relaunch Pro Tools. Cool. All right, I am back in Pro Tools, and I'm going to put the Ulean metering plug in. It's going to be the very last thing um, that I'm going to put on my insert. So insert J, and here it is, the stereo, uh, and I'll enable for updates. Here is the meter, and like I said, I like to measure uh, mastering in LUFs or loudness units full scale, and for this particular song, I'm going to try to hit a short term range. Um, so right here of about minus nine ish luffs. Um, I'm also going to look at the peak. Um, so we are going to look at um, the peak as well. And we're going to we're going to make a ceiling of, of minus 0 0.2, or maybe minus 0 0.3. Um, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So let's go to the loudest portion of the song. So we're going to try to find that. So this is a song that's been mixed, but there's no bus compression um, whatsoever. Um, when I mixed the song, there's some stuff on subgroups, but there was nothing on the two bus when I mixed it. So here is what appears to be the loudest section, just looking at the waveforms. So let's take a listen to that. Cool. So we've got true peak of minus 5.6 dB um, and then the minus 18.5 LUFs. So our goal in mastering is going to be like subtle enhancements to the track. And these, these um, subtle enhancements come in the form sometimes, not all the time, but of EQ, of compression, of stereo widening, um, using s some different plugins that are available. Uh, and then last but certainly not least um limiting i i should say too saturation is another one so we're going to try to subtly enhance we're not going to try to remix it on the two track and i think i made that mistake for years of trying to mix my song once i got to the the stereo bus but in this case we've mixed it we're just going to try to subtly enhance it and there's some tools available to us um, that pro tools makes available in their stock plugins that we can use. So we have this meter. Um, I like this UI, uh, this interface. I think I can resize it. Uh, oh wait, I think I can. Resize the window, tip, hold control key and drag. Oh, look at that. Love that. So I'm gonna take off this red square. So if I open up another plugin, it'll, it'll stay open the whole time. So we're gonna kind of keep an eye on this. Um, I like to make a memory location and I like to just call it loud part or loudest part. So loudest. So I have that memory location. So if I need to fly around a little bit later to check some things out, I can. All right. Um, the first plugin that I'm going to put on, uh, this is going to be a little bit unorthodox perhaps. Um, and perhaps you've done this and perhaps you haven't. I'm actually going to put on a reverb. So we have Pro Tools reverb in stereo. And I'm going to select a plate and just a small plate. The decay, I'm going to put really all the way quick. So it's going to turn off almost as soon as it turns on. I am going to add just a little bit of pre-delay here, a 20 millisecond pre-delay. And this is what I'm going to play with right here. Um, I'm going to turn the... I'm kind of bouncing around. I'm going to turn the filters off. It's not going to filter anything. So I've got this decay time as quick as possible. Um, 
I'm going to start this at like dry off. One thing to notice is this default gain reduction that's happening. We're going to get rid of that. So if we just drag that up, we're not looking to, um, to turn volume down. Cool. So that's a nice little bounce. So that's that's usually the first thing that I'm um, I'm putting on uh, is a is a reverb of some sort. Now um, the next thing I put on typically is some type of tape saturation. So in this case, uh, Pro Tools makes a lo-fi, and and this I would probably automate in for choruses and then take it back out. Even in a master, I might automate this to come in, uh, and we can check this out. So let's check this out. Um, so here's lo-fi and we're just looking for some saturation and this is pretty sensitive so we can look at this at 0.1 so that's like barely barely right but it, it's pretty sensitive so I'll turn this up a little bit and you'll hear kind of what happens um, what this will do is saturate everything um, which will help your song to pop out of smaller speakers so if you don't have big subwoofer, subwoofers, but you're hoping to hear bass, things like that. Like, uh, it'll just start to pop, especially what ends up popping is mid-range things as well. So here, let's have a listen with it on. So it does just add just a little bit. One point three, things got pretty wild, pretty quick. So um, zero point one. Oh, so point one. There we go. So just a little teeny tiny bit. So I, I like that. Um, next up, we're gonna use EQ. And this is the Pro Tools stock EQ. I'll put in a filler to start. And 20 hertz, that's fine. Um, and then 20K, I like that. I'll typically go up to 12 dB per octave. Sometimes a little higher. You don't want to change the slope too drastically. You can introduce some, some phasing issues, which this plugin will introduce anyway. But um, I guess you don't want to exacerbate it. Um, so here... We're going to look around. There's a little bit of mud and probably a little bit of top end that we could add. So mud that we could take away and top end that we could add. So let's let's have a listen to uh, this orange note first um, and take it from there. So this shortcut is control shift and then click. So right there. Now in mastering, um, I'm I'm usually sticking within like between zero and, and minus three or or plus three kind of area. I, I'm I am trying to keep things subtle. If if I have to go any further than that, if I really have to tweak a lot of things, then I'll probably go back to mixing. Um, so let's look for there's there's some mud over here in 500 zone as well. So let's listen to that. So Control Shift this one next. There. I'm just kind of like a gentle cue. So my cue settings are here. So I turn this into a bell. I have nice, some nice low end right there. And I like, like to use a tight cue. All right, so let's shelf some right there. Just a little shelf. 
There's usually a weird build up of frequencies. There ish. Alright, so let's have a listen to that on and off. Let's try that now on and off. Cool, so it pops just a little bit more uh, from the top end. Now we're taking out some of the All right, so we have some subtle EQ going on um, just to tame a little bit of the low end. We bumped a little bit of a nice frequency. Um, you could also find out the key of the song and, and bump like the fundamental frequency. Um, that's always a nice idea. And there's some frequency charts that are available. And um, maybe I will find one and I'll, I'll pop it in um, somewhere below. There's uh, some isotope has done some, and some other folks have done them too. Uh, I'll do another video using um, any plugin, uh, so third-party plugins, and that'll be fun as well. But for this one, I'm kind of ready to hit uh, maximizer, and I'm going to put it right before um, my meter. So, sorry, not maximizer. That's isotope. This is Pro Tools, and it's Maxim. So here we go. Um, we have a threshold, and as I pull down on this threshold, you'll notice the volume goes up. Um, it will be automatically compressing the loudest portions, and you'll see them um, in orange over here. Um, the ceiling, I'm going to put it at minus 0 0.1 or 2. If you hold down Command, um, the numbers go down just a little bit slower. Uh, the release, we're going to start with a 100 millisecond release. I think uh, I recommend anything like 120 and below for a release seems to be appropriate for mastering. Um, and the idea is the mastering is going to be, sorry, the, the limiting or hyper compression, like over an 8 to 1 ratio, is going to happen, but we're not going to hear it turn on and off. So we want a quick enough release. And 100 milliseconds, I know it looks like it's up halfway, it seems long. 100 milliseconds is plenty quick. So um, we're going to start here. I'm going to pull down the threshold, and you're going to notice the song is going to come up in volume. And also just kind of take note here. Um, check out, and maybe I'll just make this a little bit bigger as well. So check out um, our meters, and we're shooting for minus nine-ish luffs, and we just set our ceiling to minus 0 0.2, so that's where we want to see this land. So let's start here, and we'll you'll notice it get louder. <laughs> hit our target goal. So some ideas, you can look at automating some EQ bands. So you can look at automating, um, let's say this, this band right here. Let's say we had it at um, the gain just zeroed out 
but if we control option command click it we can enable automation for this band and now we'll show up here and in the choruses you can find the choruses and you can come in and automate that particular band so here I'm going to turn this up by like 0.4 dBs and I'm going to slide it in there. So I'm command clicking, I'm adding a node and then I'm bringing it out, so I'm fading it out. So it looks like this. Take a look here. So that's a great idea for subtly crafting the song a little bit so you can take away some frequencies in some smaller moments or some duller moments and then you can add those frequencies back in or boost them just um, subtly in the bigger moments to just give it a little bit more impact. So there's an extra idea and um, I hope you found that this particular tutorial uh, using Pro Tools stock plugins uh, I hope you found it helpful and also kind of realize, oh, you know, I, I can do this within um, within Pro Tools using stock plugins. And there are, of course, some more options as well, but here's a starter. So thanks for watching, um, and we'll see you in another tutorial.